सो हेलो एंड वेलकम टू ऑल माय गर्ल स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू ऑल आर वेल एंड टुडे आई एम हियर टू डू द अल्टीमेट रिकैप ऑफ द चैप्टर माइक्रोब्स इन ह्यूमन वेलफेयर यू ऑल नो दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इजी पीजी चैप्टर वेयर यू हैव टू जस्ट फोकस ऑन व्हाट इंफॉर्मेशन इज गिवन इन योर एनसीईआरटी टेक्स्ट बुक सो हियर I am just going to share all that information, important details of the chapter, which is really very important for you to understand, to learn, so that you are able to solve the questions, right? Now, first of all, beta. Basically, in day-to-day -day life, wherever we hear, we hear that microbes are very harmful. See, basically, microbes comprises of these uh, smaller organisms like bacteria, fungi, etc. which are usually known to be troublesome right so many bacterial disease viral disease fungal disease are spreading around us like anything but as we say that like every coin has two sides so these microbes have also two sides some microbes if they are very harmful then definitely some are also making our life easier and better so in this chapter we are going to see the other side of the microbe that means in this chapter we are going to study the benefits of microbes for human mankind so basically let's start and let's see how these microbes are benefiting us also so we are going to see first of all use of microbes in our day to day life in our household purposes you might even not be aware of that the food which you are taking in the food which you are consuming its taste texture flavor everything depends upon the microbes in which they are growing so first we are going to see use of microbes in household purposes so use of microbes in day to day life first and very common example that i can recall is curd right you all must have been enjoying curd how this curd is obtained from milk have you ever thought what mother what your mother at home does in order to convert that milk into curd so what she does she take a bowl full of milk she heats that milk little bit she makes it lukewarm and then to that lukewarm milk she adds an inoculum she adds an old curd a spoon of old curd she stirs it and keeps it overnight and next day when you wake up that milk that liquid milk is converted into curd so what actually happened overnight so basically beta that inoculum that starter that old curd which you added in your milk actually was rich in millions and zillions of bacteria called lab bacteria lactobacillus bacteria right and this bacteria helps in converting milk protein into casein that churns the milk and convert it into curd it is said that every day at least one cup of or one bowl of curd we all should consume why because curd is since rich in these bacteria and these bacteria are very good for keeping your gut health healthy plus they also enriches vitamin b12 in our body correct apart from this beta every day you are enjoying breads cakes pastries etc so the dough of the bread which is prepared at factory level so that dough for fermentation requires bacteria or yeast yeast is sprayed which ferments that dough and then the dough is ready to prepare your bread and etc similarly sometimes at home mummy cooks dosa idli etc whose batter also has to be prepared one night before how she takes rice and dal she mixes she just she, uh, she simply grinds them and she keeps that grinded mixture overnight the next morning when you wake up that mixture that batter has actually increased in thickness why has someone added more batter to it no 
the amount of batter is the same it is simply it has got fermented because number of bacteria must have grown overnight in that batter which has performed fermentation as a result co2 gas was evolved as a byproduct of fermentation and due to that evolution of co2 gas that puffed up appearance you can see in the batter more puffiness better is the batter tasty is the batter so all your idli dosa bread curd all these important product which you're enjoying in your day to day life are the result of the fermentation done by different microbes so isn't it useful way imagine no lactobacillus no yeast then how would you have made the batter of bread and how you would have made your curd etc so all these things are amazing in our life which is gifted to you by different microbes so let's list them one by one over here so first is lactobacillus bacteria which converts milk protein into casein right so lactobacillus bacteria which converts milk protein into casein and also improves the nutritional quality by enriching it with vitamin b12 and improves the quantity of important vitamin that is vitamin b12 right next example dough of idli or dosa etc is also prepared by the fermentation of microbes by the fermentation of microbes third example the third example is the dough of bread which you eat in day to day life it is prepared by the fermentation of yeast yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae which is also referred to as now baker's yeast why because bread is prepared by baking and here for baking the bread you need yeast hence yeast is also referred to as baker's yeast right so dough of bread is prepared with the help of the fermentation done by yeast what is the scientific name of yeast saccharomyces but here it can also be referred to as baker's yeast right clear very good now students next example over here you can mention is of toddy toddy is a very traditional south indian drink which is also obtained from palm tree sap but that sap when you collect it from the palm tree you have to ferment it for a longer period of time and uh, then that texture and that flavor develops of the drink which you commonly call it as toddy so this is also an important example cheese how can i forget cheese cheese is one of the most delicious item which we use in so many of the delicacies is one of the oldest food product to be using such microbes in fact i can say there are different qualities of cheese available in the market and at different prices so all those different qualities of cheese 
depends upon which bacteria or which microbe has been used in their preparation for fermentation their taste their texture their flavor everything depends upon the type of bacteria or fungi or any microbe used for their preparation and accordingly their price is decided in the market right so next you're going to write is up about toddy what is toddy it's a traditional south indian drink right which is prepared by the fermentation of which is prepared by the fermentation of sap collected from palm tree right fermentation of sap collected from palm tree so this is one of the important example next which i want to mention was cheese and one very good example i can recall is roquefort cheese which is prepared by the fermentation with the help of the bacteria propioni bacterium shermani so this is about swiss cheese not roquefort cheese swiss cheese the cheese which is having big big holes and those holes are actually produced due to the evolution of co2 gas so one of the example i'm going to write is about swiss cheese which is actually obtained by the fermentation performed by bacteria propioni bacterium shermani very very important right correct got my point everyone fine well done so these are the different uses of microbes which you see in your day to day life i'm sure you were not even aware of but now see so every like we say coin has two sides similarly even if microbes are harmful then some microbes may also be equivalently useful for us also theek okay? hai so i hope all these things are well understood by everyone now here you have seen the use of microbes in you know in household purpose ghar gharelu kaam mein dekha hai but let's see the use of microbes at industrial level also in preparing beverages at large scale antibiotics chemicals bioactive molecule and so many things so here we go with the use of microbes at beta industrial level so use of microbes at industrial level if i talk about then the best which i can recall is beverages now beverages like your wine beer i'm talking about them so for performing uh, Uh, or for using microbes at industrial level in order to perform ferment industry means at large scale if you are preparing curd at home then you might be doing in a small vessel but if the same curd has to be prepared by amul factory then they can't they can't use no small small utensils rather they will have big big vessels called fermenters in which gallons of milk will be kept at the same time to churn itself into curd right so first of all whenever you have to do something at industrial level you have to remember it is done at large scale and when the work has to be done in large scale then for that job to be done successfully we need to create big big vessels here such vessels used are referred to as fermenters and one of the best use of fermenter is in beverage industry in order to ferment uh so many substrates in order to obtain wine beer you know all such kind of drinks and the industries which are involved in preparing such drinks are known as brewing industry so first we are going to see 
use of microbes in brewing industry in order to prepare beverages. So which industries? Yes, brewing industries. Second important point, fermentation is carried out in big vessels. Is carried out in big vessels referred to as fermenters. Right? Now, in order to prepare beverages for fermenting, the microbe used commonly is yeast. For fermentation, we use Saccharomyces cerevisiae like you use it for the preparation of the dough of bread etc. Now, since there it was used in baking industry, hence it was referred to as baker's yeast. But here, we are using it for preparing in uh, beverages in brewing industry. Therefore, here yeast is also referred to as brewer's yeast. So, also beta known as brewer's yeast. Very important. Question can be asked. That why yeast is referred by two different names as baker's yeast and brewer's yeast. So a very clear answer will be because it is used for the fermentation or for the preparation of the dough of bread in baking industry and preparation of different beverages in brewing industries. Correct? I hope you all are going to remember. Now beta, there are two types of beverages. You just have to remember their names, examples. Some are distilled ones and some are non-distilled ones. The distilled ones are basically more, uh, are having high percentage of alcohol like wine, uh, sorry not wine, like brandy, whiskey, rum etc. Whereas the non-distilled ones, they are lighter and they have less alcoholic uh, percentage, rather more water content like for example wine and beer. So, question related to this distilled and non-distilled beverages are also frequently asked. It is given in your textbook. So, it becomes very important for you to remember. Okay. So, here ma'am is just mentioning the two types of beverages. Distilled ones. And non-distilled. In distilled means high percentage of alcohol. They are more concentrated rather I should say. Correct. And the non-distilled means where distillation is not performed. Water is not evaporated. Rather it has having high concentration of water. So wine and beer. Correct? Fine. Apart from beta, using microbes in brewing industry, one of the biggest discoveries so far is the discovery of antibiotics. And we definitely use different microbes in order to obtain antibiotics. The most common is a streptomycin antibiotic. And penicillin was the first antibiotic to be discovered, which is obtained from the fungus Penicillium notatum. So, this is like a boon discovery. If we all are existing today, it is only because of different medicines and antibiotic. So, this was a boon discovery, rather I should say, which uses microbe at industrial level. Very, very important. But here... We are not going to ferment anything. Rather, what happens in the presence of one microbe, another microbe is not able to flourish. So, simple the concept of amensalism is used for the preparation of antibiotic. No fermentation. Clear? So, next we are going to see use of microbes 
in preparing antibiotic so who was the first one to discover the antibiotic penicillin i hope you all know the name alexander fleming so but it was an accidental discovery let me explain what is accidental beta accidental means he was doing something else in his laboratory but by chance he got to know that acha aisa bhi kuch ho sakta hai so he was not planning to discover antibiotic but you can say na kuch aur kar raha tha happened some kuch aur ho gaya so there was a huge difference and it was just an accidental discovery now let's see what actually he was doing so basically beta this fellow alexander fleming he was working on some mold right or no not mold basically he was working on bacterial colony of staphylococcus right and some of his uh, that colonies or some of his petri dishes in which staphylococcus bacteria was growing got contaminated so he discarded them and he threw them correct but after few days what he observed that those petri dishes which got contaminated which he threw were still having staphylococcus bacteria growing but after he discarded them some mold some fungus started growing around that petri dish and because of the growth of that specific fungus staphylococcus bacteria could not grow and they were getting eliminated from the petri dish and slowly and steadily they were dying then he realized ki acha that means in the presence of this mold bacteria staphylococcus could not grow then he started working on that mold ki bhai what is this mold which is this fungi which is inhibiting the growth of staphylococcus then he came to know that that fungus was nothing but penicillium and from here came the concept of amenselism where in the presence of one species another species population is getting staggered it is not able to flourish correct yes or no so like this accidentally the first antibiotic penicillin was discovered from the bacteria from the fungus penicillium notatum and later on the full potency the full use of this antibiotic was established by two more people Howard Florey and Ernest Chain and then later on in the year 1945 all these three people were awarded with the nobel prize for doing such a noble deed yes or no can you imagine your life without antibiotics imagine you are suffering from fever you are going to the doctor and your doctor is going is giving you dua that okay fine everything will uh happen uh, with time don't eat any medicines we don't have any medicines uh, your fever will be uh, will go by like within 5 days or 6 days Just go and sit at home and take rest no na you going to the doctor why because you need medicines and the doctor is able to give that medicines because they have been discovered by some of the other scientists so here is how the first discovery of antibiotic was done right got my point everyone okay very good so now let's write it about it first beta antibiotic was accidentally discovered by scientist alexander fleming what was the name the name was penicillin he kept the name penicillin obtained from fungus penicillium notatum correct who explained its full potency the full potency was explained by however two more people Howard Chain and Ernest Florey explained the full potency of 
of this antibiotic right so explain the full potency of this antibiotic and then these two people along with fleming beta they were awarded with nobel prize for this noble deed in the year 1945 as their antibiotic was highly used by the soldiers of second world war so at that time second world war was going and uh, number of antibiotics were later on discovered and this antibiotic was also exclusively used by the by the soldiers of world war 2 so it was just a great boon to mankind as a result they were awarded with the nobel prize so yes can't you see the better uses of microbes in your uh, welfare so now onwards i just hope we are not going to only criticize the microbes for their bad job but we are also going to praise them for their some good noble job right now let's discuss more uses of these microbes at industrial level in preparing different chemicals enzymes and bioactive molecule bioactive molecules are basically those chemical which are required again at medicinal level by the doctors they are prescribed to their different patients according to their need in order to boost up their body mechanism correct so now we are going to see use of microbes in obtaining chemicals some important enzymes and bioactive molecules so chemicals which i can recall now first which comes in my mind is again lactic acid synthesized by lab bacteria which are ferment which are very exclusively used for the preparation of curd so very important acid which i can recall now is lactic acid obtained by lactic acid bacteria second which i can recall is citric acid which you use normally at your home as preservative hai ki nahi so this is obtained from a fungus a microbe called aspergillus niger remember these names very very important so second is citric acid which is obtained from aspergillus niger third like citric acid beta acetic acid which can also be used as a preservative plus it is used for making vinegar one of the important component of a chinese food right whenever you are preparing chow mein or noodles or whatever macaroni at home then you prefer to add this khatta khatta vinegar giving that additional taste it is also obtained from bacteria acetobacter acetai so it helps in fermentation which results in acetic acid right so third is acetic acid obtained from bacteria acetobacter acetai and one more is given in your textbook which is butyric acid responsible for the rancidity of the butter and that is obtained from bacteria clostridium butylicum right so clostridium butylicum bacteria is responsible for obtaining butyric acid which is responsible for causing rancidity sometimes if you keep butter outside the fridge and you forget it for two or three days and develop that khatta khatta taste na which you don't prefer eating so that is called as rancidity and that rancidity is because of the production of butyric acid which is done with the help of bacteria clostridium butylicum correct so these are the different list of the chemicals which you have to remember now moving towards the list of enzymes and their roles in our life which are obtained from different 
microbes. So if I talk about enzyme list, the first which I can recall and which is exclusively used in our day-to-day -day life is lipase in detergents. Detergents are the chemicals which helps in order to remove the oil stains and dirt from your laundry. Now how these detergents are capable of removing that oil stains? Because they are rich in this enzyme lipase which breaks that oil stain and is capable of removing the dirt from your dirty clothes. So lipase enzyme richly found in detergents right so this lipase enzyme is richly found in detergents which helps in removing oil stains okay second is enzymes like Pectinase and protease, which you find in case of your bottled juices. Now, you must have seen that the real juice which you buy from the market is completely, you know, it's completely smooth. No uh, resha resha kind of few things you see inside the, those packed bottled juice. But if the same apple juice or pomegranate juice, if mummy will prepare at home, then it's not very clear and smooth. Rather, it is having some, you know, small, small reshas, if you can see. It's, in short, it's not very clear. So why the market juice is so clear and smooth as compared to the same juice prepared at home? Because, beta, they are using some additional enzyme that digest those threads or the remains of the fruit. Those reshas are nothing but the remains of the fruit which your mixer or juicer can't grind it. And you can't even remove or if you want to remove then you have to sieve it out. Right? But what these people in the factories they are doing after grinding the fruit they are adding these enzymes which digest those remains of the fruit giving that smooth and clear texture. Correct? Got my point everyone? Yes or no? Chalo. So that's very good and amazing to hear. So pectinase and protease basically digest, helps in digesting the remains of the fruits and helps in obtaining clear and smooth juices right understood everyone chalo so this is about the use of microbes in different in, uh, in obtaining different chemicals now let's talk about important bioactive molecules these are those uh, substances which are obtained from different microbes with the help of the which you know, uh, they, they are basically, they are, the, they are the chemicals which boost up your system. Bio means living, active means something which boost up. So these are such living compounds which boost up the human body. Like for example, streptokinase, then we have statins, etc. So one by one, we are going to discuss about these bioactive molecules. So first, which I can see on my screen is streptokinase. Now this is obtained from a bacteria streptococcus. And what is the use of this streptokinase? Beta, it is given by the doctors to those patients who have just undergone heart attack. Myocardial infarction. As a result, their blood vessels have got clotted. And now, if you want to remove those clots to control heart attack, we need some clot busters. So, these streptokinase are nothing but the clot busters which removes the clot from the blood vessel, 
make it clear for proper blood pressure and for proper flow of the blood so that infarction doesn't lead to heart attack right very important second is beta cyclosporine a this is an immunosuppressive agent given by the doctors to those patients who have recently undergone organ transplant now what happens see whenever a patient is undergoing organ transplant suppose from one body i'm transferring organ to another body then everybody has their own autoimmune system isn't it and there are chances there are high risk that if an organ is transplanted from one body to another body then that another body may not accept it in short its own autoimmune system gets activated against the transplanted organ and if it rejects agar mere khud ke autoimmune system ne if it rejects the transplanted organ then no matter whatever transplant is done it is going to be a failure because that organ will be treated as a foreign body and it will not be allowed to work normally with other organs of the system so in order to suppress our autoimmune system so that successful transplant can take place and no such trouble arises patients are given cyclosporine a correct so what is cyclosporine a it is nothing but the immuno suppressive agent so given it is obtained from a fungus called as trichoderma polysporum and it is used to suppress the autoimmune system in order to perform successful organ transplant correct third important is statins statins obtained from the yeast again fungus monascus purpureus and they are given in order to control the blood cholesterol level to ye kyu diye jate hain they are just given in order to control the blood cholesterol level you know sometimes our cholesterol increases and then doctor suggest ki bhai stop eating this fatty food otherwise your liver will get damaged so in that case if it is extreme then statins are given obtained from fungus monascus purpureus in order to control the blood cholesterol level right clear so these are the different uses of microbes at industrial level in order to obtain different beverages in order to obtain different antibiotics and in order to obtain different important chemicals enzymes and bioactive molecule now we are going to see the use of microbe again in uh, the most important thing that is sewage treatment every day gallons of sewage is produced from every society from every city from every state now where that sewage is going and this sewage is something this waste is something which you can't control it is going to be produced every day in the same amount or maybe amount is going to increase but definitely it's not going to decrease so what is the method to treat that sewage you can't keep on collecting the sewage every day otherwise a time will come when everywhere there will be sewage and no human being will be found except sewage so sewage treatment is must hence every city every town every village has these sewage treatment plants installed which at three different levels primary secondary tertiary they treat that sewage cleans the water and then dispose them in the river bodies so now let's see what is the three steps of the uh, sewage treatment and where do you use microbes chalo so now we are going to start with sewage treatment plant where we are going to treat our sewage at three different levels 
first is the primary also called as physical treatment right which is done in two levels that is sedimentation and filtration very easy physical removal you simply filter out the immiscible waste and the heavy waste again immiscible heavy waste that settles at the base it is going to be uh, removed via sedimentation and the immiscible lighter weight Im, uh, impurities they are removed simply by filtration so first these two steps are done then we proceed to the second step that is secondary also referred to as biological treatment where we use microbes here in secondary level we are going to use microbes and then comes your tertiary or chemical treatment where chemicals like maybe ozone chlorine alum etc are used to further clean the water and dispose them in the river water bodies so that from there they can be further transported to the cities okay so now let's see how this primary treatment secondary treatment and tertiary treatment is done i'll draw explain it with the help of the diagram which is going to make it very easy for you to understand now this is my primary settling tank right where all the waste from the city is brought and collected over here and this water is supposed to rest for some time so that whatever heavy impurities are there they settle at the base which can be removed by sedimentation now this heavy impurities which settle at the base forms the sediment which can be removed and the impurities which are lighter in weight and they're simply floating like paper plastics bottles etc they can be simply removed by filtration correct so once the physical treatment is done beta then this whole water is passed for secondary treatment which consists of different levels in first we transfer the water from primary settling tank to the aeration tank here turbines are fixed so as soon all the water comes in this tank this turbine is made to rotate now what will happen due to the movement of the turbine there will be flow of air oxygen lot of impurities already there in the water so this is going to favor the growth of aerobic bacteria the bacteria which prefer to grow on dung and other waste but also need oxygen so you are supplying oxygen with the help of the turbine and waste organic waste is already there so it will help in the growth of bacteria which along with the other finger fungal filaments they will form flocks so here there will be the formation of flocks now this flock will help in the digestion of the organic waste helps in the cleaning of water reducing the biochemical oxygen demand now once it is done once the flock does their job then from the aeration tank now my water is passed into secondary settling tank where again the same water will be allowed to rest so that whatever flocks now we also don't want flocks whatever flocks is there it gets settled at the base so flock has done its job it has removed all the organic impurity and now the water has settled at the base leaving the remaining water above now this water is then transferred to another tank called as beta anaerobic 
स्लज डाइजेस्टर ठीक है अब यहां क्या होगा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू क्रिएट एन एरोबिक कंडीशन सो सिंपली ब्लॉक आफ्टर फिलिंग द वॉटर सिंपली कवर दिस कंटेनर एयर टाइट सो इट सो दैट वैक्यूम इज क्रिएटेड एज अ रिजल्ट ड्यू टू वैक्यूम एंड सम अमाउंट ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक वेस्ट इज स्टिल देयर इट इज गोइंग टू फेवर द ग्रोथ ऑफ एन एरोबिक बैक्टीरिया लाइक मिथेनोजेंस and these methanogens they will further break down the remaining organic matter producing methane carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide this together is a combination called as biogas which you can collect it with the help of a pipe whatever water is left is now sent for tertiary treatment so till here it is secondary treatment and tertiary treatment means treating the water with chemical chlorine alum ozone etc there are so many other chemicals which will further clean the water and now your water is safe to be discharged in different river bodies and from there again it will be given sent back to your homes so like this cycle keeps on happening and there is no sewage collection and there is no lack of water also this is very very important to be installed in every cities villages towns etc to maintain the healthy hygiene correct understood everyone well done so now you have seen so far so many important uses of different microbes in day to day life at industrial level in treatment of sewage in production of biogas which is an important biofuel which you can further use for cooking and lightening purposes etc tick now apart from this beta we can also use microbes for bio control that means you must have heard about organic farming yes or no have you all have you all heard about this term called organic farming Now, what is organic farming? Organic farming simply means don't use any chemical. Whatever product you want to produce, it should be pure, free from chemical. Chemicals like fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides, etc. So, now if I don't want to use such chemicals on my field, then how to increase the production? If I don't want to add extra additional fertilizers, then how to protect my crop from the attack of insects and pest if i don't want to use insecticides and pesticides to fir kya kare what is the solution why not to use the concept of prey and predation on the field in order to control the unwanted insects and pest growing so here like this beta this will not only help you to reduce the use of insecticides and harmful pesticides but it will also help you to enrich the species diversity of your land right so now let's see some of the examples where we are using this prey predation concept where we are going to introduce ourselves knowingly insects on the field which will not hamper our crop but they will attack the unwanted pest they will eat on them will will maintain their population and like this our crop will also be saved and you haven't used any other chemical also so isn't it organic farming so here some examples are there which one by one we are going to see first starting with very familiar examples of red beetles hai na the ladybird beetle which you say and dragon flies are used to get rid of aphids and mosquitoes suppose in your field if aphids are more and you want to get rid of them then let ladybird grow so ladybird in right amount will eat these aphids and will also not harm your crop suppose if mosquitoes are growing in your field and you want to get rid of them then let dragon flies grow what these dragon flies will do they will simply eat on the mosquitoes without harming your crop so mosquito ki population kam ho gayi without using the chemicals right next so like these are the examples of animals prey predation 
similarly one of the best bacteria which is very commonly used frequently used is bacillus thuringiensis this bacteria is having one specific gene called bt gene this bt gene is actually non toxic for the bacteria as well as for the human body but when this bt gene is introduced inside the insect body then as soon as this gene reaches inside their gut it becomes active it becomes toxic killing that particular insect so bt gene has been isolated from this bacteria bacillus thuringiensis and we have prepared syrups of this gene which is then sprayed on the field and as soon as the insect will feed now on this sprayed field then that that chemical will reach inside their body the gene will get active and will cause toxicity in their body killing them so same is given over here an example of bi microbial biocontrol agent that can be introduced in order to control butterfly caterpillars is the bacteria thuringiensis these are available in sachets as dried spore which you can mix with water and spray it on your field and get rid of such harmful insects so like like over here you can see we are not using any chemicals pesticides and insecticides still we are developing healthy crops correct so bacillus thuringiensis one of the most common bt cotton is one such example which is being cultivated in our country similarly one other example is given for the treatment of plant disease is the fungus trichoderma trichoderma species are free living fungi that are very common in root ecosystem and they don't allow the growth of certain unwanted organisms right so this is the use of microbes in avoiding the use of pesticides and insecticides thus promoting organic farming similarly there are some microbes like cyanobacteria etc like azola anabina all these are basically like like fungi which helps in more absorption of phosphorus etc glomus for example so all these are certain microbes which are basically used to you know enrich the soil naturally with fertilizers so sorry with important elements like nitrogen and phosphorus which will help you to avoid the use of chemical fertilizers so for example cyanobacteria like what they are going to do they are going to perform nitrogen fixation naturally enriching the soil with nitrogen and fungus like glomus will automatically absorb more and more phosphorus so it will help in providing phosphorus to the plant in more amount so now nitrogen and phosphorus both are given to the plant in right amount no need to add extra fertilizers and hence you can further perform organic farming so have you seen how many benefits are there of microbes you're using microbes in day to day life you're using microbes in treating your dirty water you're using microbes for organic farming healthy products you want nowadays organic farming is so common you're using microbes for producing biofuel different industries level etc so let's take an oath today so with this we come to the end of today's topic and with this end let's take a pledge that we are not going to judge any organism simply by looking their one side because one side may be the bad one but if you look into the other side of that person that person that hum that that organism might be also beneficial for you so like in microbes we always criticize microbes for their bad work but now here you see in this chapter that microbes are not only bad they are in fact very sometimes they can be very useful for human mankind so like every person has similarly every person has two sides let's not go for the bad side let's praise them for their good side so that they can improve themselves and become a better person in the society 
so with this we come to the end of today's lecture thank you for watching me and yes see you in the next lecture till then bye bye everyone